say that I'm endorsing the sentence of King, which is um, something that Carl's discussed in full detail. I'm fully behind it because I believe that what Carl's doing right now makes a lot of sense in bringing the people together and bringing the workers together to bring sufficient change. So I'm 100% behind it. Be got be got. People, my name is Robin Travis. I am all for Prison to the Street and Mama Can't Raise No Man, both best-selling books. Um, yeah, and I am a descendant of kings. Alright, I've been in youth work for 10 years. Previous to that, I hate to say the cliche thing, I was in the streets and all the rest of this, everyone talks about me, everyone talks about themselves, but I was a part of the street mentality. And I don't know if it's called hindsight or fear that I will ever rest on what's to call it, but I seem to be seeing a lot of things that people can't see. I seem to be saying a lot of things that people are only saying now, which I was saying 10 years ago, or they still aren't saying yet. Yeah. Now I'm in Nottingham. I know nothing about what's going on in Nottingham, if I'm honest with you. But what I've realised is that behaviour seems to have this way of, how can I say, repeating themselves. And different cities. I'm from Hackney and I grew between Hackney and Tottenham. And I haven't seen a five minutes, but since I've been for a bit now, okay, we're going to be up in the last five minutes. If I'm not saying to have substance, there'll be more than five minutes, and if you don't, but I'm coming from a place for you guys to hear me out now. Police need crime. I'm just going to get straight to it because I've got five minutes, and I hate talking under pressure because it's so important to say that you can't rush it because you might mess it up. Police need crime. I think it's all of them as well. Police need crime. And youth work is a business. Agreed? Yeah. Police need crime. And youth work is a business. Agreed? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So let's go back. There's more children in the room next There's no young people in the room next to you. They want to get in the That usually happens in London and everywhere we go when it comes to these type of events. And that's for various reasons. A lot of the time, adults, including myself, we like to give answers, right? And we want to talk about what the issue is, right? And we feel like we know better because sometimes we have that bit of wisdom of age and experience, right? But if I told you I had cancer today and I stood here, would you all turn around and say, I've got the answer for that? Would any of you put your hand up and say, I have the answer for that? No. No. Back to the youth work scene. I'm going to explain this to you. It's an extreme of youth justice and criminology. Crime is based on intervention in England. Did you guys know that? America. Intervention. Yeah? Why do you think that is? Why do you think crime is based on intervention? Intervention. Because if you prevent it, you stop crime. It's a business. I'm going to repeat that again. Crime in England is basic intervention. Youth and services, all this nonsense, I've been a part of it for years, trust me. Project work, all of it. Detached work, whatever you want to call it. Preventative schemes to deal with what they call crime. Which they like to label black crime. And all sorts of things like gangs, which is a terminology that gets thrown around, very dangerous. You guys, a lot of guys, you guys, I mean people in general who care, it's beautiful to see. A lot of people, seem to claim that they know about the issues. And you say, where are the young people? Where are these people? And I've heard this for years. I got stabbed when I was 14. The first person I had to get stabbed, I got stabbed around this area. Been stabbed a lot of things, but that's not important. What's important is, we want solutions, right? You're done with the talking, right? Right? Right, yeah. I'm motivated, you guys. I'm not, I'm not a pastor, I'm a TDJ. This is real. Now, this book, I wrote after being the first kid from Hackney to get stabbed at 14 because stabbing wasn't going on. We had the last the one-on-one -on -one fights. A couple guys were getting rushed, but that was the furthest you go. At 14, I got stabbed. The whole world changed. People keep saying, we need to know from the children what's going on. Everything in this book is from the age of five to about 18. In my area, Hackney, is where the first 
tool called Post Cold War has ever existed. And it came off the back of me getting stuck. I never heard of Post Cold War before this. Yeah? My point is, you have someone before you who was there from the beginning. Everyone wants to know, why are the kids killing each other? Why are they representing? I hear the same questions all the time. Someone like myself, and I'm not going to have a go at Manu because you're from London. In London, I get onto London's case. Because London, I've been in front of for a while. And there's lots of people in London who say, why isn't this book on the national curriculum? The reviews on Amazon say it should be in, in the schools. The reviews on Amazon say that the guy who killed Kumari Barnes, the Guardian newspaper, everyone phones me ringing, I don't even want a camera right now. Everyone calls me to say, this book has changed lives. Can we do our call back? London tonight, Jackson, whatever you want them to talk about, the book's been out for nearly six years. They call me and I say, I don't want your TV, I don't want your panels, I don't want none of it. They say, oh, we want to interview you about the book. And I said, okay, how, are you going to introduce me as an author or ex gang member? Ex gang member. Keep your promotion. You're not, about, you're not about dealing with the issue. You want to label me as an ex gang member, put me on a pedestal. Make up like I've gone through this tough life. I've reformed, so therefore I am better than the individuals I'm trying to reach. Who you claim to be today? Blacklisted these youths. They made it a battle good against evil. I'm going to give you a little quick story. Like I said, we're about to get up and leave and take a break. The door's dead. I'm not going to stop till I finish. Now don't be that disrespectful way. I just think that I'm going to forget. I'll stop now. Happy Empire, no, Happy Town Hall, there was a march. Some youth workers in my area decided, we need to do it, we're not doing enough, we need to make a difference. We're going to promote this book for a minute. You know? Youth workers, probably like yourself, can't all these people dying out, but anyone you can think of knows about this book. I don't know if they've read it, they know about this book. Now, when they did the march, they put a march to Happy Town Hall and they were arguing against the youth. They had a battle over everyone who's been killed. It was an emotional thing. Come, let's go against the youth. And I sat on Facebook and everyone said, we're going to watch. And I said, why, why are you going to do that for, guys? That's a bit counterproductive. Now, I'm a young man, very early 30s. Some of you that old enough to be my parents. And some of those youth workers were my parents' age. And they said, we're going to do a march. We've got enough. I said to them, why are you bypassing me? Do you have the cure for cancer? You had the cure for something. Did you live that life? Did you go to uni and study to hear what their perception of what that life was? Do you have the two worlds mixed together? In fact, did you grow up between Hackney and Tottenham when Hackney and Tottenham had war? Did you go to school, primary school in Hackney and Tottenham? That's so you live between two enemy areas. That's like being a, living in the middle of LA, growing up with the bloods and crypts on both sides. I know everyone. I always know the murderer, and I always know the, the, the person who got murdered. And I'm the only person who can say that's a unique story, which has given me hindsight. I now was able to put a book together to explain to people what we need to do, it's that they wanted to march. I said to them, who are you marching with? We're marching with the community. Oh, I've seen police with you. And I'm seeing media with you. These people have already blacklisted people like me. So when you're marching against them and they see it on TV, do you think that's going to make them want to come to your events? Do you think that's going to make them want to hear anything you have to say? Because you lot have turned it into A or war against them, so they don't really even want to come in. You said about, am I lying? The ones that you called, are they here? Am I lying about what I'm saying? No. Can you let them know? Put up your hands so you let them know I'm lying about what I'm saying or I'm going to just shake your head at me. So no, I'm not lying about what I'm saying. You made it us against them. Why do I know? Because a good friend of mine, Mark Prince, his son got killed, Kyan Prince, Mark's my guy, 100 to the end, QPR years ago. When they call Mark for GMTV and all these other shows, it's like they're using him on the back of his son's death to promote a cause, and it cuts him. Because I do talk to Mark, and I realise why they promote that story over this story. That story is over the footballer he was going to play for QPR. Bright future ahead of him, someone stabbed him into the ground. We need to stop the crime. We need to get at these youths. The same youths that Babylon set up to film in the first place. 
The same groups that the school doesn't support from in the Windrush, they always put in black people in the same class as the English class as Asians. You lot are older than me, you lot should have been I've just heard through great now. I can't talk from facts. Now we're going to deal with people who work in government like that, but I don't want to call that no names. None of these people have never done a damn thing. I'm not saying that they're not genuine, but on the front of this book, there's a picture of Police and random and his puppet, the puppet on the string. These lot can't, they don't have no influence over the decisions that can be made. When you're talking about prevention, prevent what? Sis, whoever recalls for prevention, their terms of prevention are two different things. When I talk to, like I'm just saying, when I talk to the youth workers, I've said to them, all right, let me go to Hatton, let me do boxing and our boxing culture my area. Let me break all the areas you hate each other and get them trained with each other. Yeah. I know you I knew I know she's faced with something. Yes. So my point is I've tried to get this book into certain places. Everyone's saying they got sent to Feltham, it's changed your life. The guy who killed Kamari Barnes read this book and said he confessed of his crime and said, even though I'm a Roman, I know I killed this young man. I read this book and you know what? Confess it, because I know I've done wrong. I'm sorry for killing your son, man. That's what he said. Did you hear about that? No, because they won't promote it. They promote top level, right? Yeah. They promote gang man, right? Yeah. I've been out for six years. Six years. Six years. My thoughts to white people as well, you have not been upset to some of you are just a number. They don't care about the killing. So it's for everyone inside this room. Okay, what's the solution? Do your research. You want to cure something, do your research, right? This started the post congos right? I'm telling you, it did. No one in Hackney's argued this. Have you heard anyone say this book was a lie in Hackney's? Have, brother, have you heard anyone in Hubbard where we live say that this book is a lie? People who have stabbed me was meant to write the book with me. How about that? People who have stabbed, I'm friends with, I could have brought them all, all here today. And we were singing at the kids who were going to do 25 to life. We was lady. I didn't, I didn't go to police to sort out the peace with the guys who stabbed me. I never went to the police today in my life. But we resolved our peace. So what's the solution? You're going to keep asking. And it's in the book. One of its forgiveness. Forgiveness. How do you stop wars? Tookie Williams was telling you before they got him killed. And they knew he was powerful. He got a Nobel Book Prize award for Peace, peace Prize award for what he was doing. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the, the guy at the time who made the decision to say, come on, make the mayor attack. Let's take him out. Winnie Mandela went to visit this guy because of how much work he was doing. So their system always shows you that they don't care about you and your powerful piece of the change and then we keep running to the system. No disrespect, brother. There's nothing the man, the man can do. Absolutely nothing. It's a suit and a tie. He's on a puppet, he's on a string. David Lamy, Diana, whoever you want to talk about. So let's just forget that forever more and let's focus on what we can do. Youth work is a business. They need you to go to prison because they can make money from going to jail. Nobody knows that. Why do you think they're privatizing prisons all the time? It's a great business. I might open a little prison myself. You want to go home to the prison oh. and start a business? I'm not talking about the stuff. It's a business. The business. But no one wants to like to hear the truth when you sit down and think about it. They promote things that are negative, negative. The rap scene. You went from hip hop to gangster rap. They infiltrated. Look at history. If you look at LA, you went from Black Panthers to Bloods and Crips. Mm. Who put the drugs in LA? Mm. But we have a gang issue. And you are arguing with a gang issue. And we're going to say we have it over here. Don't be fooled. We have a community issue because they've broken down certain communities and happenings of gentrification. Something's changing up right now. Everywhere's changed up. Brooks and services are coming right now. The point I'm making is the solution is peace. If you want to know why someone like myself started stabbing people, read the book. If you want to know why we kill, read the book. If you want to know why we don't care about going to jail, it seems that, read the book. Fear is controlling everything. I'm going to do that last week. Fear is controlling everything. I'm going to do right now. Fear is the reason why most of you are here today. Because you're scared of what's going to happen to your children. Fear is the reason why I stab certain people because I didn't want to get stabbed again. Fear is the reason why we behave the way we behave when you've got rappers in their 30s still on YouTube with 25 gangs behind them. Yeah, no, this is my end because they want you to see there's people behind me. That's not power, that's fear. Understand, you can't 
That's a knife crime and gun crime because guns don't kill people, people kill people. So if you want to battle something, battle the mindset. This is the mindset. Forget my age now. This is the mindset of you. And I'm gonna come off the stage now. And this is the second book I wrote called Mama Can't Raise No Man, because it starts off on the street. They say you go for the head, the body will fall. We need peace on the streets. You can't have no community unless you unite. Yes, true or not? So the first thing before we keep talking about everyone coming together and why the youth ain't coming, we need to make peace on the streets. So people from that area and from area can come there without wanting to kill each other. Because everybody feels safe again. That's where we need to bring that community spirit back. And all of you that can do that, you don't even need this book for that. You guys can build your community. That's what you guys can do. And like Tamika said, you have the conversations at the end. Do not let this meeting be wasted. I've seen it for 10 years. People are hearing some women around that were talking, saying some valuable points. And I'm sitting there learning, saying, yeah, I hope you lot come together at the end and do something about this. And basically, that's what I'm going to say. We're trying to get this book in the school. That's it. That's it. So one more thing. One more thing. I mean this. I mean this. This is the book. This is what I'm saying. I'm just going to show you how you go around things. You have to complain about the book not getting to schools, right? So then there's got to be a plan B. Do I give up because it's not getting to Babylon? Do I give up? No, no. There's plan B, there's plan C, there's plan D, there's plan E, F, G. Trust me, it doesn't need to get into schools. Because if you want me to do right now, the church is investing just yesterday about £2,000 to come buy the books off me because I've been talking to church and we're going to the community in order to give these books out and we're going to also read with the people who can't read. So that's a solution again. If you're being blocked, people, learn how to go around it. Stop relying on Babylon. And that's all I'm going to say because I'm not going to get tired. But don't, you, if, the, if, if, the, if the doors are opening, kick it down or go around it, go over it, go under it. Because that's what our people have been doing for years. Yeah? Make it happen. Done.